guys, welcome to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome to another Premier Division preview show. Before we begin, I just want to say thanks to the three boys, Daz, Jamie and Ush, who uh, came off the bench and put in a brilliant display. So fair play to them and thanks very much. And uh, I suppose the first team players are back today. Keane's here, Philip is here and I'm here myself. We'll start off with Sliger over to St. Patrick's Athletic at the showgrounds. We've got third up against second tier, but uh, a decent gap of 11 points between the teams. Sligo do have two games in hand. Um, Pats haven't lost this meeting, Keane, in nine games, would you believe? It's just something I checked this morning. Um, you know, how do you see this one going? Yeah, so look, you can really see it going only one way, can't you? Especially in the last couple of weeks, the way Sligo have gone. Uh, they've been fairly poor in a lot of games. Uh um, I'd like to think Pats can go there and get three points. Uh, but, you know, once we come back up the road with something, I'd be happy. Uh, keep that 11 points either way. So even a draw, I'd be happy with the showgrounds. is always a tough place to go. But with the run that they're on, I think there's a lot of pressure on Pats to go and win this. But, you know, we seen the last week, as we seen the week before, Pats, we get results with the teams. Whatever team we play, we get results. Most cases they're not, especially this season. And you know, we we have that bit of look, we have that bit of quality at the back. Like, you know, what like you look at that even the game even last week, you know, two years ago or whatever, that that's a game Pat would have drill. You know, that ball would have been put in across and it finished two all and you'd be fuming with yourself. And you know, we hang on to one it and we gotta go right at the end then to, you know, nail it. So I, I, was, I was happy enough with that, but that just shows you about Pats, you know, we can play when we want to play, we can dig in deep when we want to dig in deep, and you know, I think there's not many teams like that, so I'm going to go for Pats to win this. Yeah, I mean, Philip, look, it's been a difficult run for Sligo. Um, the end of that run as such with a draw last week against Trotter, a very un, uninspiring draw, I might add, by the way. they um, I was at the game as well, and um, Sligo kind of played for a draw, believe it or not. They played not to lose the game, which you can understand in a sense, but it shows how confidence is in that club at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure if Bulger, he might be back for this game, but um, there's a big hole in the midfield when he's missing. Massive hole in the midfield when he's missing. Morhan doesn't look up the player without Bulger as an example. Um, they're going to have to end this run sometime and get a win at some point. They do have the quality to do so, but they haven't really shown a doggedness that maybe Pats have shown. Yeah, and look, the, the thing I see with Sligo at the minute, Keith, is that, like chances that probably were going to go their way earlier on the season just don't seem to be going their way now, you know. And I think that's a bit of it as well. You know, they've had a couple of bad results on the bounce now, and as you said, they went to basically play for a draw last week. So it, it just goes to show that they aren't playing very well at the minute. Um, look, Pat's Pat's have been delighted with last week and how it went, and I think. Uh, at the moment, you're looking at two clubs with a completely different mindset as to how they're playing on the pitch and how they're able to approach games, you know. And I think, uh, the, particularly the past couple of weeks, I know I haven't been on, but Pats have really impressed me with how, how they've shown they can go and get results in games. And Sligo have actually really disappointed me because I thought that they did have a spell during the start of the season where they were on a really good run and then two or three games, they kind of blipped and then they came back again and... I almost expected it to be the same with the run that they're on at the minute. I thought it'd be three or four games at most, and then they might start picking up results again. But it just doesn't seem to be going right now at the moment in time. But as you're going back to what you've said a lot of times this season, Keith, you can't lose every week. And I, I don't know, I, I, I'd fancy Pats to go up and get a result. But at the same time, I think maybe Sligo could get something out of this game. Um, as you said, before, as I just mentioned, you can't lose every week. And I don't think Sligo will. So... I'm personally going to go with a draw. I'm going to go with a score draw. But again, I, I see this. I see this being a really good game over the weekend, over the over the towards the end of the week that we're uh, looking forward to seeing. So yeah, I'm going to go with a score draw. I'm going to go one all maybe. Sligo's biggest issue though has been not scoring goals. Like they scored three goals in the last five games, and even against Strada, they didn't create. They literally created no chance where that was a good chance. You know, Andrew Wright did look decent. I have to say up front, he held up the ball, tried to bring players into the game. 
But I mean, they literally, I was just looking at the creation, saying, where's the creativity going to come from? That said, though, Pats haven't kept a clean sheet in six. And obviously, there's reasons for that, as we all know. You know, they've had patched up defences. I'll throw in Keane quickly as well, that Yaris won't be playing, as far as I know. Is that right? No, he is, yeah. Oh, he's back for this game. Okay, he's definitely back for this game. So, um, yeah, that's a big thing as well, because uh, all the chopping and changing in the Pats defence, like, it's not going to help, is it, to be honest? No, and, you know, I think... You know we've done we've done better than I think a lot of people have actually taught in the last couple of weeks with the squads that we've had on the pitch. Uh, you know yeah. I, I, I'd be I'm over the moon at the minute and it's exciting times for a Pats fan at the minute, considering you know what where we are in the table we still have a cup quarter final coming up and you know you're looking and you're saying our, pl- our best players are starting to come back now. And, you know, we're starting to get our best players back on the pitch, apart from Benson and Mountney, of course. But, you know, what everyone else starts seems to be moving well and getting back in. So, you know, it's exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And uh, I think this is a great game, especially for the telly. You know, Pats, Pats is not going to come there and sit there and sit in and hope for something. Pats are going to go with this. And Pats aren't coming down that road without three points, in my opinion. Uh, and you look at... Sligo, they'll want to put on a good performance, which I've no doubt they probably will, especially in front of the camera. So it's a great game to watch on Friday night. Yeah, it's definitely a big game for Sligo. I'm going to go for Pats myself, maybe to win 2 1. Uh, Philip, just before we move on to the next match, do you think uh, we keep putting it off? But do we have a serious title race on our hands, do you think? I won't ask you. At, <laughs> at, the, at the minute, at the minute, yeah. With the way yeah. the results are this weekend, yeah. Um, look, it's. It's not in Pat's hands. It's it's in Rovers' hands and it's Rovers to bottle up. But after seeing the performance, should I, I, I don't know. I got a bit of a fright, to be honest with you. And I, I definitely think there's a title race on. And I suppose it's great for neutral. And look, I won't say it's not great. It's great as for a Shamrock Rovers fan that we have a, have someone that's going to compete with us towards the end of the season. And I just think the way momentum's going at the minute, I wouldn't write Pat's off just yet. Yeah, it's kind of that guts they have in their team as well. We, we lead on actually to Shamrock Rovers and Waterford as well because, uh, you know, it's hard to believe, but I know it's all competitions, Philip, but it's four defeats in a row for Shamrock Rovers. Mind you, only won in the league against Harps, but, um, you know, that was, I think, Harps' first win over Rovers since 2008, which I couldn't believe, actually, that statistic. Yeah, madness. But um, five goals in five games for Shamrock Rovers, Philip. Uh, 11 goals in five games for Waterford. This is a tricky assignment, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I suppose if there's any time you don't want to play Waterford, it's at the moment, you know. Had it been Waterford at the start of the season, you'd have been like, oh, jeez, this is great. Like, you know, but they've turned their season around big time. And I tell you one thing, I still, I'm still i quietly confident in, in the ability that we always have. Everyone knows how good we can be. And I think we will get a result here. But uh, saying that, it's going to be a tricky, tricky game and one that we're going to have to be 100% at it to get a result. So... I obviously the past few weeks I haven't been here. We've been out of the cup and things aren't going so great with, with a couple of dodgy results in the league. And I suppose if you look back over it, you know, we've kind of made our own look sloppy mistakes at the back. And it's unusual. Like it's not like Rovers. But again, if I'm to put it down to anything, I yeah. think it's just the amount of games we've had, Keith. You know, I, I seen it. I personally thought in the in the cup game. We were out on our feet at half time. I just th- I just thought that's what it was. You know, we really struggled and really tried to slow the game down. And look, it, it, it was obviously majorly disappointing to go out of the cup. And I, I personally don't think Bowles will win it, but they'll be flying high now with that in terms of getting a result over us. Um, and then obviously the league game, which just again, it just looked very leggy, Keith. And I don't know what it is at the minute. Like, like you know, I think we've played the most games in of any team in the league. And uh, I know we've got the two games in hand, the league, but in terms of Europe and, you know, I just think that that's catching up on us. And the fact you've got players like Scales heading off, you know what I mean? It's it's It, it does make up, like, you've got a couple of aging players in there that aren't able to play three games in a week. And that's what they were being asked to do a few weeks back. And look, maybe going out of the cup is a blessing in the skies for the league. But again, you'd have to, he needs to get his bodies back fit and have a good go at it. Because the way things are at the moment, we're really stretched, you know, and... Paris, as I said, look leggy. So I'm quite concerned about that. But uh, I think maybe just the quality of players that we have, Keith, will get us over the line in this fixture anyways. As for the league, as I said earlier on, I think it's it's bang open and there's big games to play. And 
look, it's all for grabs. And like, as I said, I'm going to go with a result here. I think we'll win 2-0. Um, I'd be happy. I'd be delighted if we kept a clean sheet. Kino, what do you think is wrong with Rovers the last few weeks? Do you think it's just one of those little blips, like and they just need a bit of a reset and get a win and off on their bike again, so to speak? Yeah, look, it's it's tough because everyone ups that game, that 10% when they're playing Rovers. And that's, you know, Rovers have to deal with that. That's the pressure you have of being a Shamrock Rovers player. And, you know, like Rovers is, everyone wants to be Shamrock Rovers. And that's, that's the way it is. So it, it's been like that for years and it's, it, it's always going to be like that, in my opinion. So, you know, you've seen how Finn Harp celebrated last week after they beat thing. Like, they they beat Pats in a much better performance and there wasn't half yeah. as much hype or celebration or anything. So, it just shows you how big teams take of Shamrock Rovers. And, you know, I, I genuinely think it's not down to the quality of player or anything like it because... On that day, when they can turn around, they can turn around. Uh, going out of the cup, it's been an awful few weeks for Sean Crowers. Just now getting away from that. That was uh, always going to be tough, wasn't it, after the European game? Yeah, I think we all but, nearly predicted Bowles are going to win that based on that as well. Yeah, but, it's, you know, it's... it's not, for Philip. <laughs> it's, the way, it's the way you go out of the cup by your Bowles. You know, Bowles weren't really great. Rovers didn't really do anything in the game. So that's not... You know, that's worse. You don't mind getting played off the park as such, you know? So, I, I'm going to say, in this game, this is, I'm raging it's on Friday night, but the good thing is I'll catch the last 15 minutes of it on the way when it's just finished uh, in Sligo, so I'll catch the last 15, but, you know, I'm, I think this one is going to be really tricky, and, you know, I, I can see Waterford coming here. I'm really, I'm not going to say surprise Rovers because I think everyone knows how good Waterford are at the minute. But, you know, I think they could make a hard, and I'm going to say a draw here. Uh, I don't think Waterford will win it now. I'm not, the, I'm not that deluded at all. But, they better not because I'm going to the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can't see Waterford winning it. But they're going to make it very tough. And I think if Rovers are going to win the game, that they're, they're attacking players, Graham Bork and stuff like that, is going to need to start pulling the strings in the middle and breaking this defence down and walking the defence because, you know, they're going to sit in deep. And we've seen Sean Rovers struggle against teams that have sat in deep and be tough to break down. So I think that's got that's the key to the game. If Rovers can start getting in behind, bear a move and up front, they'll win the game. But... They haven't done that enough this season for me. They haven't free flown attacks in games. I Philip would probably agree with me. They haven't done it on a consistent basis. And I think this game, they have to be on point that way. And they have to be on point defensively. No mistakes. And you know, I think unfairly, I think Manus has probably got a bit of criticism lately. Uh, I think it's very unfair on him. Uh, I think in the, the time and it was all to do with the time, and I think as well. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, he, he got a bit, he got a fair bit of stick and fairness to him uh, for the European goal, and then you know the stuff like that. So, you know, it's been an awful few weeks for Rovers, but if they were to put a right with a win here. Oh, they're still top, yeah. Yeah, if they were to put a right with a win here on Friday, it would really put a statement out to everyone that you know Rovers are still here because I think, I think they've lost a bit of respect. This year, there's question look, marks there now, Kino. You know, I think you'd yeah. agree there's question marks there. Like, you know, I think they've lost a bit of respect. And like I'm not I'm not saying like you know, I'm not saying fans, obviously fans and stuff like that have their opinions on Rovers and don't like them and stuff. I mean, as a team coming to Tally, they've lost that respect of oh, you know, yeah. teams coming in and sitting in and all. You know, teams are like, we're gonna go, we're gonna have a go at this. And I think that's the difference. They've lost their respect. So three points here would go a long way to gaining that back. Uh, it's going to be, I think this is going to be a big week to see where things are on, on Friday night at 10 o'clock. We'll see where both teams are. And, you know, we'll see the run then in two weeks' time. You've Pat Flame Rovers. So, you know, it's it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be a big two weeks. I know it's three weeks, but you have the cup in between, so it's going to be a big two weeks in the league uh, to see where everything's going. But I'm going to go for a draw here. 
Yeah, Keen, I'm going to go for a draw as well, to be honest. I think Waterford are well capable of coming here and nicking a draw. I think if Shamrock Rovers play to their best, they're going to beat Waterford. But I think if they're if they're not at their best like they have been the last few weeks, and the way Waterford are playing, the style they're playing, 11 goals in five games, John Martin's on fire. Um, you've got Prince. We saw them in Inchicore recently against Pats. And when they break, they're very, very dangerous. Like They can put you getting behind, uh, playing excellent football. And I think... I just feel they'll feel confident actually coming into the game. So I think they could nick a draw as well, to be fair. Um, How do I hang up? How do I hang up? How do I hang up? (laughs) I can put you off. Uh, At the brand new well, Derry City take on Finn Harps in what is another Northwest Derby. They only played recently in the Cup and Harps won that. Derry are going to be out for revenge, I've no doubt, in this one. Uh, Fourth in the league against seventh in the league. Believe it or not, only five points between both teams as well. Um... They've won their last six games, Harps and all competitions as well. This is it's going to be tasty. I think particularly after the cup game, Keen, I can see this being very tasty. Yeah, it was a lot of good games. You know, Pats of Sligo, yeah. Waterford, and Rose. These are all Friday too. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of games, and you you would have liked to see it being spread out over the Big weekend, weekend, maybe, and having having a couple of games on each day to watch, because this is a game now that I'd be interested in looking at. I think it's very important. I think you know this is an important game for a lot of teams. This is an important game for Sligo. It's an important game for Dundalk down the other end. Uh, you know, it's an important game for a lot of teams in and around that area. And you know, I just I think Finn Harps are going to come here and get three points. I just they're on such a roll at the minute. The way they're playing, the confidence. Especially in Tundi and you know Adam Fowley off the Rui and playing off the wing and you know the coil in the middle they just they have such a driven outfit and Seymour has just been a breath of fresh air. Oh, he was now, excellent last day. Yeah. So you know yeah. we've been looking at Finn Harps playing and you know they they were in great form coming into the Pats game. Oh, since they beat Pats, I think their form has even gone up another 20 percent in the other two games and. You know, Robbers went bad last week. Uh, they didn't create an awful lot, but you know, Finn Harps were they were so dogged in what they done. And but our, our possession, they were dogged. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disrespect them. They were excellent on the ball, and they were the, the better team. Probably won in the end, just shaded it. But you know, I, I fancy Finn Harps to come here and get three points just on the farm, and if they get that. It opens up the whole thing, in my opinion. The whole, like, from literally ninth all the way to probably fourth. That opens the league that little bit more, depending on results, you know, like if Bowles get a win or stuff like that. It, it opens the whole title race, so, or the whole European race and relegation race as well. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Like I said, I think this week is where we're going to see teams probably setting their ways a little bit and setting their, setting their positions in the league. And I think this week will tell us a lot about where teams are at. But, you know, this is... I'm disappointed all these games are Friday. I'm fuming because they're like three fantastic games. I'm going to go put my neck on the left line here. I'm going to go Finn Harps to win this. I haven't gone for a draw yet. Oh, I have, yeah. Uh, Philip, <laughs> it's, already I've broken my duck. Um, it's strange, isn't it? Finn Harps, to say about four or five weeks ago, Philip, people were saying, oh, there's serious problems in, in the big camps. Trouble. And there's serious issues in the camp and behind the scenes and all. Isn't it amazing how when um, a couple of wins come along that those um, problems have disappeared somehow? And those people that were calling for Ali Hawk yeah. now are all of a sudden back under their rock. It's, it's mad how football works. I'll be honest with you, Keith. Um, when from watching the games the night, I thought it was the best Finn Harps performance I've seen in years. I can't remember a better performance. I just thought they were excellent, as as Keno said. And I won't, I won't uh, allude to it too much. But I have to say, it was uh, it was a smashing performance and completely deserved the points, in my opinion. Um, and and I, by I the suppose... way, just to throw it in there, Philip, one of the goals they scored. You know the way the narrative is. Harps don't play good football. One of their goals is Brilliant. fantastic. Yeah, exactly. And it was nice to see. And I suppose, look, you don't like your own team to lose, but I was, I was a bit, there's a bit of me was a bit happy that Finn Harps came away with the points and it was them that beat us and not say someone like a Pats or something like that. You know what I mean? Because they're a good club up there, you know, good people. And 
nothing but respect for them. And I'll be honest with you, I'd love to say I think they'll win this week, but I don't think they will. Um, I don't know why. I just think this momentum that they've got at the moment has to come to an end somewhere. And I think a derby like this, I just think it's it's set up for them, you know. And I know it's been tight in the, in the couple of games that they've had already this season against Derry. But again, I just I think Derry are due something now, a due result, and against Harps that that is. So I'm gonna put my neck on the line here and say that the the, the, the run that Harps is on is gonna end, and the momentum's probably gonna halt a bit. And I think they'll be brought back down to earth. I'm gonna put my neck out there and say it's gonna be. I'm gonna go two one to Derry. I think I think Harps will score. I think they've been playing well enough to score, but I just think Derry might just a bit of a boost coming into a big game like this and wanting to get a result on the board and just put that little gap there between themselves and them. And it'll be comfortable then, I think, if they can do that for the rest of the season. As Keno said, he's, he thinks it's going to be kind of nearly setting things in stone for the rest of the season. Um, and I have to agree with him on that point. So I'm going to go 2-1 Derry, but it's going to be a smashing game and I will make sure to look back at it. Philip, I think to be fair to Derry as well, actually that defeat to Harps in the Cup, that was um like that was a blip. They've been on a good run themselves, to be fair, and playing really well, actually. Yeah. So, you know, that was a blip for them. And like McGonagall's come in now, he's starting to get a few goals for them as well. He's looking good. Uh obviously Parkhouse has left the club and that Boyce is playing some smashing stuff at right back. Again, he's gone under the radar a little bit this season, I think. Yeah, that'll hurt them. They'll keep going out of the cup because they've been exactly. they, like they've had a big chance there to go. They could have won that this year. You know what I mean? Just uh, the fact they went and had an off day against Finn Harps and look, you can't have an off day in a derby. You just can't because you'll never win a game playing an off day uh, in, a, in a big massive derby like that. And look, I suppose it's it's a game that both sets of fans are looking forward to, Keith. And I think it's going to be one of the games of the weekend. And as Keno said, it's a disappointing uh, schedule this week. As Keno said, with the whole weekend, we could have probably spaced the games out, especially with no Europe anymore. Um Personally, I thought they could have done it a bit better. But again, look, it's it's all exciting stuff, exciting times in the league, Keith. And the, any game that's that's going on as a derby is a game that everyone wants to watch. So I'm sure people will look back on it if they're not watching it live. Philip, Derry, Derry for me as well. Yeah, just, just on the break, you have a nice break next week. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Keen's like monthly oh, there. Oh jeez, don't talk to me. Do you know what else is actually on. nice though? We have we have a what? break as well, but there's there's a break in the table, six points if we win those games, and that's all she wrote. In the funny I'll thing, you, without going back to Shamrock Rovers too much there, and the funny thing, it might actually do them good, to be honest, like you know. Yeah, exactly. I think we need to keep and yeah, without without losing them too much, I think it's something that we need. So delighted. Moving on to Head in the Game Park and Drottle United you know, you take on Bohemians. It feels like Bohemians haven't played in about three years, to be honest. The four games in hand with Drottle, even though they're both level in the table, Keen. So it's very difficult to place bowls at this minute in time, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's strange, isn't it? Uh, yeah. bowls, bowls haven't played a league game in I don't know how long. Uh, <laughs> three years. It feels like ages because I know they played Rovers in the cup and you know the league game. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm it's a, five I'm weeks now, is it? Coming up on four, five oh, weeks. Bit, I'd say it's three to be honest, but my head's like a save at this minute. I can't yeah. think. But, um, it, yeah. it, it's, it's mental, isn't it? Uh, you know they'll be they'll be trying to get themselves back. They had a taste of Europe for the first time in a long time last year. I know the fans didn't go and stuff like that, but this year they got a real taste for it and a real hunger for what European football can do to a football club. And I think the fans and stuff like that, they, they were delighted with how it went. And they kind of, they took their eye off the ball a little bit on the league front, uh, especially with the draw against Longford and stuff like that. Uh, oh, but that's it, Keane. I will throw in, they were like that in the league before they got into Europe as well. Yeah, fair, yeah. Right? But, you know, yeah. focus tunes to Europe, but yeah. some nights don't happen if you don't do your leg form and you don't get yourself into Europe. And I think the race for tour is going to be a decent one. Uh, oh, look, Drotter haven't been down great lately either. Uh, Drotter have kind of dropped off. Well, I'd say kind of dropped off. They have dropped off. And I don't think teams are as fearful as they would have been uh, just before the break. And you know, I think Bowles, they there was a lot of goals they played last week in a friendly. There was an awful lot of yeah. goals. Derek Pender and everything played for them. So I wouldn't take too much out of it. But 
you know, I'm going to go for a Bowles win here. I think they'll, you know, they'll really step up. I think that they're, they're, you know, they got a taste of Europe. They got a taste of playing teams like that. They're still in the cup, you know. They have an awful lot to play for this season, and I still think I genuinely believe this. I think they'll finish in Europe. I think they'll finish fourth or or tour. They they'll definitely finish fourth, and if they finish tour, to be a bonus. I, you know, I I can see Bowles definitely getting through the next round of the cup as well. Uh, you know, they've got minute. You'd like to think they'll win that. And you know they can get into the next round, and then all of a sudden they're in a semi final. That's going to raise your like your game as well. And if they get and the same to be a team, they, they seem to be a team actually that's set up for knockout competition a little bit. Yeah, they're brilliant. That how Keith sets them up, and you know I, I wouldn't fancy myself up against Bowles in a ninety minute game where you know if you can't take it back to Richmond the following Tuesday in a replay or whatever. So you know we, I'd, I'd be. Excited if I was a Bowles fan, there's still an awful lot to play for. And, you know, it, it's great that they're in a position where teams usually play in Europe. And, you know, they stop playing in Europe and then they're coming home. It's like a big anti climax. And, you know, they've nothing to really play for. Well, this is the opposite for this Bowles team. They have Europe to grab, but it's gruff of the neck. I think it's there for them. Their name is there. Uh, they just have to put the performances in and get the points. And, you know, they have a fantastic cup competition as well, which come the end of November when the cup final is on, there will be full stadium. So as many people as you want can go. I think that's going to be an occasion in itself. And, you know, everyone wants to be there. Do you? you know, so it's it's going to be uh, an interesting few weeks for Bowles. But, you know, I put me, I put me faith in them getting three points here. Yeah, I mean, Philip, uh, yeah, they have dropped off a little bit, to be fair. I think that's a lot to do with the intensity. They're very, finding it very hard to keep that intensity up all season. That said, they've got four points in their last two games against Dundalk and Sligo. And I suppose, Philip, the aim really for Drotted all season, no matter how well they were doing, is to try and stay up. Now, in fairness, yeah. Waterford and Harps in particular, are uh, they're really running after them, though, aren't they? So they, they do need to be picking up points here and there and try and find something, don't they? Yeah, and I suppose my Stephen Keno, we both said it a few weeks back that they'd be comfortable yeah. and they'd be all right. Like, and I just suppose the weeks go on, you're not worrying for them, but you're, there is a bit of concern there compared to what there was maybe two months ago, you know, and the results just haven't really went their way. And, you know, they could have won the game last week. They probably should have won the game. And I think everyone's seen what uh, Clancy said about officials and decisions and stuff like that, but it just goes to show that... Uh, you, you need to take your chances when you get them. And they didn't take their chances last week against Sligo. But uh, I don't know. It's, I, I think he, Keno mentioned it a few times there about Bowles. And the, he mentioned the word cup about six or seven times. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's a good thing that Bowles are turned into a cup team for themselves. Because let's be honest, their, cup, or their league form has been pathetic this year. I know they're, they're comfortably mid-table, good chance of Europe. But if, you want, if you're a so-called big club, you should be easily trying to get into Europe. Do you know what I mean? Look, they have a few games in hand or whatever and they probably will do it. They, if they don't finish in Europe... Sl- Sligo's form has given them um, a chance. That's it though. Really. The only re- the, I pretty much think that's pretty much the, the main reason why they've got a chance because of Sligo. And look, you need to make your own look and not hope that someone else has a blip so you can get in there. But like, it, let's be honest, they're, in, they're into the next round of the cup. They have a very, very favourable draw. You'll expect them to win comfortably. Like and there's not too many big clubs still left in the cup when you put it into perspective. Like in terms of what there probably has been in previous years, um, obviously Robert's been a big one that they've got rid of. But I don't know. I just think that if the opportunity is there for them to go and at least get to a final this year, and if they don't win that cup this year and they don't finish in Europe, they will be kicking themselves. You know what I mean? And like it, it would be a massive, massive failure. And look, uh, Keno mentioned it as well about how. How Bowles have had that taste of Europe, and they've seen how like how big it is, and what sort of revenue it can generate for your club. Even though they didn't get through into the group stages, they still made a lot of money off it. But like you can you can't only expect to do that for one season and then be guaranteed that like you know you have to work for it. And I personally think they've been pathetic in the league, and I've said it, I'll say it again. They've been woeful. Like and I just don't know. I, I have a feeling draw they're going to get a result here. I I really do. And I just think that they're going to struggle with league form for the rest of the season. I think their always are probably on that cup more than anything else. I know they might be saying, oh yeah, we're here for Europe or whatever. They win the cup, they're in Europe. So I don't see why that's not their main perspective at the moment. So I just think 
Drogheda are going to come into this game. I think there's obviously been a lot going on with them and their camp as well over the past few weeks. I think the, the, what Clancy said as well this last week is it's going to rev those boys up, you know, and put, they want to put a performance in for their, their manager. And I'm personally going to go and say they'll get a result here. They're going to go 2-0. Two, two I'm actually going to say they're going to do it quite comfortably. I just think they can't lose every week. And I think this is a game they'll win comfortably, just as with, with the league form from Bowes. Yeah, I don't fully trust Bowles in the league yet either, if I'm honest with you, but and I do see a little bit of improvement in draw this, so looks like I'm going for another draw. That's my second draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for me. Only two draws. Longford and Dundalk. Will I go for a draw here? We've got 10th against 9th, but there's 17 points between them in the table. No clean sheet in eight games for Dundalk, Keen. Um, I think this question actually, Keen, has to be thrown out, to be fair. We know where Dundalk are in the league. There is a couple of games at hand, but they, they are there in the league. Has Vinnie Pert actually improved them in reality from the time Filippo was there? Well... Structure wise would tell you yeah. Results wise will probably tell you no. Well, position wise in the league will probably tell you no. Uh, this is going to be a big test of character for Dundalk. Uh, I think we'll know a lot about this Dundalk team on on uh, the weekend here. Uh, I think we'll know whether we'll uh, we'll know whether they be in a dog fight or not. Because that's it, Keane. Do they have the fight? We know Harps have the fight. Waterford have shown it. Drotter will show it. Um, it's all right us saying they've got the quality, but if they don't have the fight, they're in big trouble, aren't they? Yeah. It's, you know, like I said, I don't want to criticise them too much. Uh, they've been through the mill as a group of players, I'd say. Like the stuff they had to deal with probably in the last six months, players would never have to deal with in their career, or maybe once or twice. Uh, it's tough. It's tough for the players, and I'm not. I'm not backing them for backing them's sake or anything like it. I just think there's an awful lot of off field problems there. And now you're here, and the club is gonna sell, and you know you're gonna have players worrying about their own future, their contracts. Like some of them be on a decent wage, and that's all in the back of your head, and they're going out to play a game. And you know, it's. I think. We've seen this with Rovers a couple of years ago. I'm not saying Rovers overspent or got themselves in trouble or that, but when they got into Europe that time, some of the players they signed when they got to Europe the first time, like with Rohan Ricketts and you know players Patterson, your man Jansen, the blonde goalie. Uh, you know they they signed some <laughs> blonde goalie. Yeah, no, sounds like yeah, a TV man, program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man from Spurs, he was awful. Yeah. I think Philip would tell you that he was, he was yeah. amazing. But you know, they they spend an awful lot of money on these type of players that have done dark, have done this year, and it hasn't worked out for all of us that year. They sacked Stephen Kenny and all the year after, and it was it was an absolute mess for a while. They had Brian Laws in, who never met the players down the cup final and. Yeah, they were going for big right names as well, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, so they much. were they were a mess for a little while. And I think that's Dundalk at the minute. I think that's the, the transition Dundalk are in right at the minute. That's the the comparison I was making there with the two sides. I think uh, it's going to be a little bit it's gonna be a little bit tasty, I think, this game. I'm going to think Longford can get something here. I think Longford will get that second win this season here. And I'm going to go for a Longford win. So the reason why I brought that up about Vinnie Pert was, my point really was, the way Dundalk are run at the moment, can any manager actually go in there and actually succeed the way they're run right now? No, I don't think so. Um, I personally think whoever's making the decisions at the club should, uh, should sit at the sideline um, every week. And, you know, it sounds I like they think- want to. Yeah, so why not do it? I mean, like you can do the Philippe all sort of t- thing and just sit sit on the bench and not have your license, pay someone that does have a license, and you tell them what to do. Well, I suppose not many people are going to want to do that. Um, I suppose if uh, if 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 they do need anyone, I'm sure they'll find someone with the money that they have. But at the same time, it doesn't look like they're willing to spend anymore. And Kino said it; they might be selling. And I don't know. I think it's a it's it's a shit show. There's there's nothing else to call it. Like you know what I mean? Like. 
it's it's like Cork, but it's worse. Remember Cork when they were challenging for league? Potentially quality? worse. If it yeah, goes wrong, it's, it's potentially worse. Yeah. Oh, well, it, let's be honest, Keith. If they go down, that's it. I think they're done. I think they're in big, big, big trouble. Like the the overheads in that club and the revenue that they 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 should be generating to keep that club up. But like, even you know Philip I mean? this week has talked that. Sorry, even Philip this week has talked that Vinnie Perk might be getting a new contract, and I just think at this yeah. minute in time, it's a bit strange to be even talking about things like that. Yeah, that's that's that should be on the backbone, Keith. They need to get to the end of the season and stay up, yeah. like. And, and if you like, let's be honest, Keith. Not one of us in a million years probably thought that Dundalk were going to be sitting ninth with, at this it's, stage of the season. It's bizarre to be even speaking about this. Yeah, it it is mental, like. Do you know what I mean? And I thought. I did think that they would dip off. I did think there would be a dip and they wouldn't be as competitive maybe as they as they usually have been over the past few seasons. But uh, like it's, it's hard to dig them out when they they ran amok for years in the league. They dominated everything, you know, and it's, it is hard to dig them out. But again, it's the people that are running this club, you know what I mean? And the way they've run it at the moment is just an absolute disaster. And if you look at their league form, I, I personally think they're in big, big, big trouble. I think they'll probably just get over the line against uh, Longford here, but other clubs that are that are playing and just above them have been playing a lot, lot better. And I know they have to play a few of them a couple of more times. So, like, even though they have four games in hand, it's not technically in their hands because they have to play the teams above them, you know. And if they're not they getting points off, Phillip, that, they've only a couple. Of, they don't actually have four games in hand. They've only two games in hand with most of the teams oh, around them. Not. Believe it or not, two. Well. There you yeah. go. Like, do you know what I mean? And like that, like. I'm, I'm concerned, I'm majorly concerned. If I was a Dundalk fan, I would be terrified at the fact that you might not be in the division next season. And I know that sounds silly because they'll end up in a playoff, like, but you'd fancy them to even to win the playoff. But again, the way would they played this year. If they got into that I, position, the quality, you'd wonder. The the, yeah, but the fight and the, you know, they would have the fight. Would they, if they get into that position, it shows they haven't had the fight in the first place. Like, for example, if they lose this weekend, this, they're in big, big trouble, I think, because that will show Longford will come with the fight. Longford have won one match this season, the opening day, as Keen said. Um, I think Longford, Dundalk will either win this game comfortably, or if it's a tight game, I think Longford will win it. Yeah, it can go that way. Oh, okay. I, I go, I'm actually going to go for Longford to win it, believe it or not. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna go Dundalk. I'm gonna go Dundalk one nil, yeah. Keith. And I. I just think maybe this is this is a thing for a whole other video, Keith. But like Dundalk, we could talk about them all day. And again, I just think the quality will get them over the line. I think uh, Longford will. Uh, Longford will go and they'll give a good account of themselves because let's be honest, even though they've won one game this season, there's been a lot of games that they have been competitive in. Although there has been a lot more where they've been awful. But against big clubs, like, you know, you see it against Rovers, it's a mad stat, but Ro- Shamrock Rovers have only been ahead against the Longford less than seven minutes this year, and they've won all three games, like, do you know what I mean? It just goes to show, like, they, they are in games, but again, they just haven't been in enough, because that's where they are in the league. So I'm going to go 1-0 Dundalk, and have to say, really looking forward to the fixtures this week. I can imagine Keno's going to have an absolute feast over the weekend, Marathon watching weekend. back games. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The television will be burnt out come Saturday. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to them. And they, uh, as I said, Dundalk, they need to get a result here, Keith. Brilliant. Look, guys, we'll leave it there. Please subscribe, hit your bell notification button, and let us know what you think in the comments on any topic. Thanks, guys.